Hello, Mr. Maestas here, and in this video, I'd like to talk about interpreting context in a linear regression equation. So previously, we talked about how do we determine that linear regress regression equation, um, given some summary statistics that we have here. And uh, I, I kind of just showed you, you know, using the formulas, B1 equals R sy over sx the standard deviation of y over x and the correlation coefficient and this remember is the slope and then b sub zero was uh, y bar minus b sub one x bar and i didn't really use very much i really didn't use any context really this is just i just used uh, um, how to find the regression equation uh, recall it was y hat equals b sub zero plus b sub one i don't know why i sound like a robot but this was our linear regression equation okay least squares sometimes called lsr so now i'd like to talk about three things that are important in interpreting the context because this is really what you're going to have to do is understand the context behind the, L, the lsr so i'd like to talk about three things in context the first thing we'll talk, well, first we're going to have to find the equation, but we're going to look at the three parts in context. We're going to look at the slope in context, the y-intercept in context, and something called r-squared. Okay, so we'll talk about that in just a second. So first of all, let's find the equation of the linear regression equation. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to do the work real quick because I'm just going to plug it into these guys here and I'm going to find the equation given my summary statistics of the height and wingspan that I have here. So give me a second to do that. So now I have here I calculated the slope and I calculated the y-intercept and want to put them into my regression equation. Now for purposes in my class and I, I assume that this would work well in any class if you're looking for statistics in any class. I would want to put this equation in terms of the context that I'm using. Now, uh, the height is going to be my explanatory variable, and my wingspan is going to be my response variable. So my height is going to be x, my wingspan is going to be y. In my equation, I'm going to write it as wingspan. Oops. Probably need an i in there. Okay. So wingspan hat equals 4.88 plus 0 0.933 I'm grabbing those numbers from here times the height man sloppy handwriting right now so the reason I do this is because I can see my equation in context and believe it or not if in the AP exam if you're looking for AP, if this is AP stats, if you write your your wingspan and height, then you don't have to define your y hat and your x in variables over on the side. So if you just write it in your equation. Okay, so we want to write our equation in context. Let's talk about our slope. Our slope is going to be, change the color here, right here. Okay, 0.933. Well, what does that mean? That means that for every increase in height, see here my height is going up by one. So for every unit increase, and this is this is based this is in general for any formula here, for any unit increase in my x variable, my y variable is going to increase or decrease depending on my whether this is plus or minus. Right, the slope is positive or negative. It's going to increase in this case increase. So every unit in height, my wingspan is going to increase by 0.9933 inches on average, right? On average, remember we gotta say on average because this, again, we're talking about averages. We got these from the means, okay? So this is regression to the mean. So we wanna make sure we put on average. So how would we write that? Well, this is how we'd write that and make sure you wanna write this out in the sentence. You'd like to say, oops, for every, increase in one inch of height we would expect to see an increase 
on average, remember those are keywords, on average of wingspan, we would expect to see an increase of 0 0.933 inches in wingspan. Now there are other ways you can phrase this. You can also say for every increase in 10 inches of height, we would expect to see an increase on average of 9.3 inches in wingspan, right? But we don't really want to say 10 in this case because these are kind of, you know, these are big numbers. We're not going to jump up by tens. So one in this case is fine. For every increase, okay, for every increase in one inch of height, we would expect to see an increase on average of 0.9933 inches in wingspan. So now, now that's our, our slope, okay? If you just write uh, basically everything here that I have in for every increase in one bold, we would expect to see an increase on average of bold, bold. So these are the bold, in the bold, that's what's going to change. But every other word in there, you can pretty much keep the same anytime you talk about slope. So let's now talk about the y-intercept. So the y-intercept right here, 4.88. Now, uh, let's think about this, what the y-intercept would tell us. Go back to, if we go back to, to you know, algebra one, whatever, we got uh, this line that goes through here, that y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Where it crosses the y-axis would mean where, z where x value is zero. The x value in this case is height. So really what we're talking about is if you had a height of zero, which, <laughs> you know, that doesn't make much sense. I guess if you're like a fetus or something, I don't know. If you have a height of zero, which doesn't make much sense in this case, but you know we're going to interpret it nonetheless. So basically, this means at the start, the initial uh, wingspan or uh, the base, you know, the starting point here. We would say, I, I mean, I guess I would say, you know, if you had a height of zero inches we would expect an average height or an average wingspan of 4.88 inches. You know, that doesn't seem to make much sense in this case, but you know, we're going to interpret it nonetheless. So this is, let's, let's write somewhere here that this first one, let me get, let me get my pen here. Okay, this, let me get my palette here, give me a different color. Let's go with blue. This is slope. This is y-intercept. All right, now let's talk about this thing called r squared. r squared is called the coefficient of determination. I know that seems like a, a long term, coefficient of determination. Now, how do we figure out what r squared is? Well, we're given r right here, r is the correlation coefficient. So we're just gonna square it. Yeah, that's it, we're gonna square that. Okay, so 0 0.882, I'm gonna put in my calculator and square it. And I'm gonna get 0 0.778. Now, r squared turns out to be a percentage. Let me talk about what r squared is here. Uh, let's say we have, you know, we have our line that goes through there. You know, uh, we have our line that goes through here, um, you know, something like this, like that. And what we're trying to do with this line is that we're trying to capture as many, uh, you know, as many points on this line as possible. And the closer we get, you know, with the last video with the least squares regression, when we're trying to make this, uh, make these residuals very, very small. Remember, residuals from here to here. Uh, residual is the difference between the point and the actual, right? The point, the actual, and the predicted. That's my residual. And my goal here was to reduce and minimize the length of these residuals. Well, um, let's think about it. In wingspan, we have all these very variations, right? Not everybody has the same exact wingspan for height. It'd be nice if they did. We'd be exactly perfect. But it doesn't happen, right? Some people are long with short wingspans. Some people, like NBA players, are 
long with long wingspans. Some people are short with long wings. Some people have Tyrannosaurus Rex syndrome where they're, you know, they're like walking around with little, little, little tiny wingspans. Um, but there's so many differences in wingspan and height that it's going to be nearly impossible for these to be exactly perfect. So what we hope to do is we hope to, by this linear model here, catch as many of those differences as possible to, in our model so that way we can have a good predictive, you know, we can, have, we can predict our, our wingspan from height very closely. So that's our goal. And what R squared tells us is how much of those differences, how much of that variability in wingspan, you know, those, those short, long, um, and really, really, really long wingspans, really short, how many of those differences in wingspan are accounted for by our differences in height and by our model? How many of those do we catch? Do we catch a lot of those or do we catch very, very little? Because, you know, if we don't catch a lot, if the percentage of those differences that we catch are, is, you know, is very small, then, you know, we probably aren't going to have a very great predictive analysis by this, right? It's probably not going to be a very strong correlation. So what do we, what do we want to do? We want to give that a, a number. So here's what we're going to say. This here is a percent. This is actually the percent of those differences in wingspan that we're catching in our model. Um, in fact, this is the number, this is the percentage of differences in wingspan that we can account for by our differences in height that we've created in our model. So this is, that's how we're going to write our R squared when we're asked to interpret R squared in context. All right, we're going to write, we're going to write it like this. We're going to say that, um, you know, 77%, 77.8%. Of the differences in wingspan are accounted for oops by the differences in height right that's what we're looking for we're talking about the variability in wingspan all those different wingspans and all those wingspans along the one if you could see me right now i'm like waving my arms in the air because i'm going long and short long and short all those differences in wingspan are being accounted for in our model by those differences in height all right so that's what r squared is it's the percentage of those differences that we grab that we that we are make sure that we can get so that we have high predictive value so that is our uh, r squared which is the coefficient of determination all right, so these are three things that we want to describe when we're talking about linear regression equation in context of a certain situation. All right, so catch you soon, folks. Bye.